Oh. I think that's all I want to cover for now. It's Mark. It's kind of talked about ebooks and ebrary. Thanks. Yes, uh, my name's Mark Langston. And uh, Laura introduced me as the Electronic Resources Librarian. That's actually my, my former uh, job title. I'm actually now uh, called the Head of Collection Management and Technical Services, which means I'm still the Electronic Resources Librarian uh, <laughs> and uh, other things as well. Um, but I'm here to tell you about e-books. And uh, these e-books are uh, not textbooks. They're just uh, you know, the typical uh, academic monograph that the library would acquire in print. Uh, they can also be works of fiction, novels, and so on. Um, now, these are books that are typically sold to, to libraries. And, uh, and why is that relevant to uh, affordable learning solutions? Well, a lot of these books um, come with a multi-user license, which means that we can buy one, you know, pay for the book once, and then as many people on campus who wish to use it can access it. And a lot of times these books may be, you know, titles that uh, are on a, a reading list that you give to students or maybe even require them to, to purchase uh, to use for their class. So uh, by finding these books that have a multi-user license, the library can purchase them, uh, you know, and set up access to them in our catalog, and then all of the students can use them. Um, but how do you know what has a multi-user license and what can be used in an institution? Well, typically, you know, you shouldn't have to worry about that as a, as a faculty member. Uh, basically, what happens uh, for any book, if a faculty member wants it, they put in an order request for that title. If it's an e-book, they'll send it over, and then what happens is we look at what the requirements are uh, for us purchasing that as an institution. And uh, it'll usually fall into... Uh, one of a few models. One of them is a subscription model. Um, and these are typically the kind of model that a publisher will use um, that is providing you know, access to their ebooks. And so we'll get a, an order request for this title. We'll find out that what we need to do in order to access it is subscribe to that publisher's collection. And oftentimes, uh, you know, this will be very expensive. You see, uh, publishers, they want to establish a revenue stream where they're getting paid every year. And uh, so when we run across something like that, it's very difficult for us to add uh, titles like that to our collection because most of our budget is taken up by subscriptions. And given you know, the general uh, you know, uh, environment that we're in uh, related to you know, funding, uh, it, it's very difficult for us to add new subscriptions. Um, another model that you come across is uh, publishers uh, will typically want to sell you a package of titles. They're not really interested in selling individual titles. They want you to buy a subject collection or maybe even a, an entire collection. And, uh, you know, we're not typically in interested in going after books just based on who happens to publish the title. And uh, also, when you buy a, a collection, uh, that collection will go out of date if you don't update it. So you're kind of like getting yourself into a situation to where you're going to be adding that collection every year to keep it up to date. And, uh, and oftentimes these collections are expensive. So, you know, we're not really able to purchase books that way. Um, what we do do is we uh, acquire books, you know, by an individual title. And there are uh, vendors who make this possible. In fact, they sell uh, to, uh, you know, books specifically for libraries. Um, but again, you won't often know. And this is another typical uh, situation. We'll get an order request for a title that a professor says they want to use in their class, you know, the next semester. Um, we'll look into it and find out that the license for accessing that title is intended only for a, an individual user. That is, uh, what uh, the user does is they purchase the book, they get a, a, a login ID and password, and they're you know, uh, forbidden to share it with anybody. So we can't purchase titles like that and share the, the username and password. Um, we need titles that we can use in an institution. And uh, I'm going to do some hands-on now. And uh, the one uh, vendor that we are using, uh, for the most part, 
is called eBrary, and that's the, the website that I want to show you. There's a link on the handout at the bottom of the page. And um, eBrary is not the only uh, vendor for eBooks. Uh, let me just go to academic. Um, there are several others. Well, not several, but there are a few others. And uh, uh, we're really only doing business with eBrary. And the reason why is because in order for us to purchase individual titles from eBrary or any ebook provider generally, uh, is they require an annual fee as well. And it's usually not a very, uh, uh, you know, large annual fee. Um, but, you know, we, we don't want to be paying annual fees for a vendor where we just might have a few titles. If we're going to pay an annual fee, we want our ebooks to be on that platform. And we looked at a number of different ones, and eBrary is the one we selected. We like the way the, uh, the uh, ebooks are used. And, uh, and also, uh, it's, it's not much of a problem for us relying on one ebook provider because they all generally provide, you know, the same titles. And eBrary, uh, you know, offers pretty much everything that can be sold to an institution and used by an institution. But in particular, what I want to show you is, uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, the link on the handout is for this page. And you'll see they'll have these different models here. One of them is uh, subscribing. Uh, you can subscribe to a subject collection or their, what they call their complete product. Um, they have something called patron-driven acquisitions, which I'll explain if time permits. And uh, short-term loans, I may explain that too, but really what we're interested here is purchase. And these are uh, titles that we would purchase just like any other book. And uh, so if you're, if you're interested in uh, using uh, or assigning your, your students to read a book, uh, you know, for the class or even purchase it, you can come here and see if the title's available. You can also, you know, just browse and see what they have available. But uh, what you'll notice here is they'll actually show you the prices here. Um, let me scroll down a little bit. And what you're looking for are these that say multi-user price. And for eBrary, multi-user is uh, single user list price plus 50%. And so uh, now uh, we're fairly new to eBrary eBooks, and uh, at this point, we're only purchasing, for the titles that we're purchasing, we're only purchasing single user. Uh, some libraries, uh, the better funded libraries, will just purchase all multi-user uh, when available. And that way they don't have to worry about users being turned away because uh, the book is already being used by a, by a single user. But what we can do is if we have an eBrary eBook and you, and you want to have it used by your class, we can pay the extra fee to make it a multi-user. Also, if you come to eBrary and you find a title that you want and, it, and there is a multi-user price available, you can just put in the order request and say, you know, multi-user and we can purchase it that way. That's what we have to, to offer right now as far as that goes. Um, so, and without going into, I could go into a lot of detail about eBooks, uh, in particular how eBrary is used, but if you go to this link and you're browsing uh, the list of titles, click this info link, and uh, actually that's not the one. Let me go back. Um, yeah, let me, I'm going to go at this a different way. Uh, let me first uh, show you how to find the ebooks in our catalog. Um, there are a couple of ways. Uh, if you go to the catalog and then go to advanced search, uh, enter location main collection, that's where typically our monographs that can be checked out are located. Uh, and then we want online. I'm just going to enter a star here. And search. And these are, this pretty much brings up all of the ebooks that we have available. And you can see it's quite a large number. Uh, okay. Let's see, is that an eBrary one? Mark, I don't understand it. 
Anthony Berry one. So if one person reads those, then nobody else can read If it's if we have single user, which for eBrary we uh, it gets kind of complicated right now <laughs> because there are some eBrary. Very unlikely that one person has read them. Well, uh, only one person can read it at a time. So oh, no, right. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, it's one. It's one person. At th Thanks for asking that, though. Uh, so from from this point, you can go to Enfo, and here you will get you know uh, training videos and you know quick guides and things like that. And you'll find out things about eBrary eBooks. Like uh, you can check out the books. Actually, you can. Uh, it requires an Adobe uh, e-reader, I think they call it, uh, which is a free you know Adobe uh, program that you can download. And uh, you can actually, you know, uh, check out the book and carry it with you portably, uh, you know, off the campus network. Uh, there is even an iPad app, which, of course, works for the iPhone and the iPod as well. And, uh, and you can download the books and take them with you. Um, you'll also find that you're able to print entire chapters. Uh, and it will be in a portable format, a PDF. And oftentimes, you know, depending on the book, that may be all a student really needs. And for that, to do the whole chapter, you don't need to actually download and check out the book. Um, and also, uh, you can, you know, create links to, you know, uh, links to specific chapters or parts of chapters. You can highlight. There are a lot of good features about eBrary, and so. Uh, I would encourage you to ex uh, explore and, uh, and check out all of the, the features that are available. Um, so we're doing pretty good on time, aren't we? Okay. Uh, yeah, what I would like to show you is um, uh, some more of the library's ebooks. Uh, now, we do have two uh, subscription packages that we use. and. Uh, if we go to databases A to Z, we provide links to them. One of them is called uh, Safari. And this is a subscription that is a CSU system-wide subscription. The chancellor's office you know, covers the cost for us. But these are uh, typically uh, computer manuals or technology uh, kinds of books. And, uh, and these are, all allow multiple users. Uh, you can't download them, but uh, more than one person can use them at a time. Another that we have is called ACLS Humanities eBook Project. And uh, let's see. I'll just bring up one. And uh, let me see now. Yeah. And these are uh, this this collection used to be called the History Ebook Project, but I guess they've expanded it now, and it's more humanity, so they go you know beyond just history. Uh, but again, these uh, allow for multiple users. Uh, you can't download them. Uh, you don't have a lot of the features, uh, printing entire chapters, uh, you know, highlighting and things like that. But these are all there, and it's a good collection. It's a subscription, and so uh, new titles are added all the, all of the time, and um, it's worth uh, you know looking in here to see you know depending on if you're teaching humanities or not. Oh, we lost some uh, we lost some links here. Um, whoops. Also. Uh, there are many other ebooks that we have, and uh, one of the places that you can go to is if, it, if you go to uh, Research and Subject Guides, and then look for ebooks. This explains uh, three different ebook collections that we have that are using uh, one of the other purchase models called uh, PDA, our Patron Driven Acquisitions, and. Uh, uh, the CSU system is actually doing uh, a project this year, and basically the way it works is uh, they uh, acquire, well, they get a number of bibliographic records uh, from an ebook provider, and they load them into the catalog. And we don't actually own any of these books, but we can access them. 
and uh, you don't get billed for them until someone actually goes in and uses the book. And they have a trigger. Uh, if you just go into the book, you don't purchase it. You have to, you know, read it for a certain amount of time, uh, print something. Uh, they have triggers like that. And then uh, the CSU gets an invoice for it. And once they pay for it, it becomes uh, part of our collection. We get perpetual access to it. So last semester, they did uh, one of these projects for uh, a, a vendor called Coots. And uh, I guess they budgeted $60,000. And they went through it pretty quickly. Again, this is accessible by the entire system, CSU system. This semester, uh, they're uh, doing another uh, PDA project with another vendor called EBL. Now, you'll notice each of these will have an example of a book that you can link to. And then eBrary. Now, this one's one that we're doing locally. We just started. Uh, and we started out kind of small. We just want to see how it goes. Uh, we have loaded records, and we continue to load them every week uh, for just a select number of subjects. We're doing uh, philosophy, music, uh, art, uh, and theater arts. And uh, so these records are, there are about a 1,000 of these records uh, by now. They're in the catalog. Users discover them. They access the ebook, and uh, if they, you know, set off one of these triggers, they use it for 10 minutes or print something, uh, then we get an invoice for it. And uh, and so it's actually been going pretty well. We haven't really purchased a lot of these books, uh, but again, we're just um, you know uh, doing a small number of subjects, you know, philosophy, music, theater, arts, and art. But we could expand it, and uh, and that's something that you know. Uh, we'll be talking about whether we'll continue to do this. Uh, and then, of course, these records, as they sit in there, uh, as they get old, they'll eventually be taken out if they haven't been used. Uh, and, um, but that's basically uh, where we are with eBooks. And But the thing to take with you are two things. Uh, one is if you specifically want an eBook for a specific title, the best thing to do is just send it the title request through your book chair to your subject librarian and just say, I would like uh, an ebook copy of this. And then we'll see you know, if we're able to get it. That's the easiest way to go about it. Uh, and then, of course, the other is to use the link on your handout to where you can search or browse the uh, eBrary collection and then request that we purchase a multi-user license for that title so your students can use it. So. Right. They would be, uh, well, uh, yeah, they would typically be charged to the department, yes, so with the department, department funds. Department right, yeah. 